Hey guys, I'm here with Alex by Severine Perret. Perret. Maybe I'll start calling her SP. I'm just going to call her Severine P. <laughs> and Alex is a, um, a semi custom order, I guess. He is for a specific customer, but um, she is just, you know, I'm just having me paint him however I want and she is happy with that which I love doing so I'm just working on him I'm using a lot of cool toned colors if you can see he his kit is like super crazy crazy orange actually my light makes him look less orange um but his kit is very orange in person um i have like a cool light on just because it photograph it uh records better geez look at this maybe i shouldn't be painting right now i didn't realize i still had paint on here <laughs> right now i'm actually working because i'm trying to get out of helping outside it is four degrees outside currently and um, we are getting ready to do the garage remodel so my husband is like clearing everything out and he said um, you know if I had work to do I didn't have to help you know that he'd make it work I am gonna go out and help but I'm trying to delay it as long as possible in hopes that maybe it'll get a little bit warmer. <laughs> and this baby, I actually started a little bit early. Um, I was scheduled to start him in February but I have some like tight scheduling stuff. And so I had, I had taken that time off um, for Odin. So I thought I would just move it back forward or move it forward and get a good head start on it so that I have something to do when I'm taking a rooting break from pickle, which I desperately need I don't know if you guys are rooting your pickle cuts or not yet. The ones that followed along with the pickle tutorial. Mine is going like so slow. I was so glad my customer wanted this kit actually I really really loved this kit um, I I love Severine I don't want to say anything bad about her sculpting at all but some of her other more recent ones have been disproportionate as far as like the limbs and head sizes go this one looks really really good it's like really proportionate and I love this face so much. I have a thing, like you'll see as you get to know me better with my favorite sculpts. I love these like slightly open mouths. I don't love like huge, you know, huge open mouths. But I really like that slightly open, relaxed mouth. Like his face is everything that I love about Sleeping Newborns. So I have been super, super excited to be able to paint him. And I just hope that he comes out like perfectly, basically.
and I have to say that the customer that ordered him is, ugh. Okay, I have like really, really good luck with my customers always. I've, I don't think I've actually ever really had a bad experience. I had one bad experience years ago with someone who tried to get money back after um, she said that she had to throw away an almost $2,000 doll because the arm fell off. And then I found out she actually did that to a whole bunch of artists that she would buy these like really expensive babies and then try to get money back um, without returning them, you know, and then she would resell these babies. So she was like a total scammer. But besides that one, I have always had the best luck with uh, customers, but his customer is like, I just can't even tell you guys. She is the freaking most amazing, like, sweetest customer. Like, like I feel like we're friends, all, you know? Like, she is just such an amazing person. She is so sweet. She's so easy to work with. And I really love when you get somebody like that who feels like a good match for you. Like, it makes creating their baby so much more enjoyable. It really motivates you to do an even better job than you normally would. I mean, or it should anyway, <laughs> you know, it should. It, it motivates me. Like, she's just so, so sweet that I want to make sure that whatever I create for her is freaking perfect. I don't want there to be any issue with anything at all. I want her to see it and just be so happy with it and fall in love with it instantly. So I'm hoping she's also my customer that um, she bought Indy from me. So she is a good one. She has a really large collection. Um, so and she wants like all these babies that I really, really love. So I'm excited about working with her in the future and being able to like create more in my style with somebody who's super easy and super nice to work with. And you know, I've like, I've obviously, I paint sculpts that I don't like all the time um, for custom orders. Sometimes I'll say no if it's just a sculpt that I don't think that my style will translate well onto. If I don't think I can do a good job, I won't do it. Um, but it is so much easier and so much more enjoyable to paint when you're actually painting a sculpt that you love. And so I'm really excited with her. I ha I'll have the opportunity to do that like all year pretty much. Sorry, I just need to clean this crease up right here. I had something stuck on it. I'm taking a couple day rooting break from pickle. Um, we're doing some, you know, the garage thing, which I'm doing this right now. But joking aside about getting out of helping, I am going to be going out to help um, after I do this layer. And then we have some other house stuff we'll be doing this weekend. So I will get back to rooting pickle on Monday. Um, and I don't know, I might, I don't, I was really, really hoping to have Pickle finished by Friday, but next Friday, but I honestly don't know if that is going to happen. It's going a lot slower than I had anticipated, which definitely, you know, that happens. It's the nature of reborning. Sometimes things just take longer than you want them to or longer than they should take. I know that I'm not on a schedule with it, but 
but just so you guys know if you are waiting for more videos that the next one likely will not be until Monday. I've also decided on my sculpts that I will be doing using for my next full um, tutorial series. It is going to be Lucas sculpted by Cassie Brace. I am so, so, so excited about that sculpt. I don't know how many of you ordered him. He's like a really small limited edition. I'll show you this right here above my desk. I have this version, this like inspiration for me, which I actually do. I kind of switch them up, but I have little photos that I print out around my desk of Reborns that I really love. This is Veronica Lale's version. And I, oh, I love Veronica's work so much. I don't know if you guys follow her. If you don't, you should go check her out. Um, she has in, I mean, I will say in this last year especially, that girl is on fire right now. Her old work, older than a year, I liked. But she has done something in this last 12 months. I don't know, I don't know what she did, but her work has improved dramatically. She has definitely become my favorite artist lately. Um, I just, her work is just so amazing. She is just rocking it. She is doing such a great job. If you guys like that style, you should definitely go follow her and check her out. But I'm really happy she's been like doing a lot more prototypes and I'm happy to see her work. Every time I see her work, it makes me want to buy the, the baby that she painted, which I think is like the most important thing if you're a prototype artist, right? That your version sells the kit. So I wish she hears that. She'll take that as a really big compliment, but I'm just really, her work is so inspirational to me lately. Like, I haven't seen anything that she's put out in the last year that I don't like. I'm hoping I can get most of this orange out of this kit. I don't know what it is. Have you guys noticed that lately? That... Um, the like neutral color now is so crazy orange from all the like from Joy Dolls and stuff. I feel like it did not used to be this orange. Now their like natural fle flesh color though is just crazy, crazy orange. I don't like it. And it's so dark. I, you know, I don't neutralize kits ever really. Um, before I start working the only time I do actually like do anything to the kit before I start working on it is if I want to lighten it and then obviously I lighten it to a neutral color so I guess I am neutralizing when I'm lightening too but um, but most of the time I don't most of the time I just neutralize as I paint by paying attention to like what colors I'm putting on and you know, warm cools, all that kind of stuff. And I can neutralize the kit as I go, which is less work and it's easier. So that's what I do. But this kit is so orange. I almost considered neutralizing it first. And then I was, it was so dark. I'm like, maybe I should lighten it. But um, he's actually going to have a little bit of a darker skin tone. Not a dark skin tone, but just a darker Caucasian skin tone. So I'm hoping that it'll be fine um, as I just do it. I'm just going to use a lot of blue and darken him up a bit. Hope I can get rid of that orange. I'm adding blue to all of my reds, as you can see. Just trying to keep my palette really, really cool for him. 
but if this was not going to be a slightly darker baby, I would have 100% needed to lighten and neutralize this kit. That's the only thing that I miss, honestly, about painting Bountiful Baby Kits. I used to, like when I first started, I painted almost all Bountiful Baby Kits. I did not buy a limited edition kit for at least two years. Like, I just did cheap Bountiful Baby Kits. Only the ones on sale. I'm talking about the ugly ones that nobody wants. You know, like like Natalie, all, you know, all the Denise Pratt sculpts, pretty much, like just all of the, uh, you know, the, the Grant, the ones that are not very attractive kits that most people do not want to buy when they are finished. Um, but so the first time when I bought a sculpted kit, I could not believe the vinyl difference because I had been used to painting all of these super white kits from Bountiful Baby. And then I got one of these and I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? It's bright orange. And at that point I had already stopped using um, flesh tones. And so my work was really improving because I wasn't using those flesh tones anymore. But then I was thinking I'm going to have to start using them. What am I going to do with this crazy dark vinyl? But I feel like it's just gotten worse and worse and worse lately. I mean, they would be a great base tone if you're doing, like, a really dark skin tone. But if you're trying to do any normal, lighter Caucasian skin tone, it is really, really difficult. Even if you're trying to do, like, a Mediterranean olive, like, you're starting off with orange. Orange is not a great starting off place. I just wish they would change their mix-up a bit. I mean, maybe I shouldn't complain. It could be worse. It could be those horrible, like, purple ones that we used to get back in the day. Those were, like, really, really awful kits. They were so hard to neutralize. Like, you would have to do so many layers of salmon and yellow. And, I mean, you would have to, like, paint these kits for so long just to get them paintable. It was really, really, really difficult. And I don't know, I hear a lot of artists say that they like this, the orange color, they actually like it as a base. I just don't. Like, I have a really, really cool skin tone. Like, I don't have much yellow at all in my skin. I have, like, all blue undertones because I'm so pale, probably, but, um... But, so when I see these, like, most of you probably use like the inside of your wrist as a little color reference so you can tell when I use the, the inside of my wrist as a color reference these kits look crazy like they all look jaundiced to me which is why I don't really use any yellow and I very rarely use warm colors like I do not use straight burnt umber ever like I, I if I use burnt umber I'm putting some cool something with blue like I don't use yellow ochre anymore I used to use yellow ochre a lot on Bountiful Baby kits but on these kits it's like you don't need anything that has any sort of yellow in it at all unless you're trying to make a jaundice baby I'm actually going to do a little purple layer here on the nails. I should have done it on the fingers. I'm going to. I do have some exciting uh, stuff coming up for that next series. I was telling you I'm going to do the Lucas series. Um, I am talking to a small world nursery who does the um these modeling sponge sets that I love so much and I'm working with her she is going to be making a custom set for you guys um well for my members she'll be making a custom set to go with 
my next tutorial, which I'm super, super excited about. So I'm working with her on exactly what patterns and sizes and all of that that I want. I thought that would be really fun. You guys could get a, buy a set and I'm getting a set. We could all use the same sponges. And then that way, like you guys, I get a lot of questions about um, my modeling sponge patterns and what size I like, what size I make, that kind of stuff. So this will be a really fun, easy way for you guys to be able to just see, you know, this is exactly my favorite patterns. You know, I had them custom made, so obviously that's my personal preference and to be able to use the same ones. Um, I will like announce those. Um, she is working on like the proto, the first set right now. Um, so once that is done, I'll announce it when I announce my exact start date for, um, for that Lucas tutorial series to start. And I'll just get, um, she just wants hopefully a little roll call of how many people would be interested in buying the sets. Um, my members will get a discount on those also as just a little extra thank you um, for being members and um, so if we can get her at that point you know a little rough number of how many people would be interested in getting them that would be super helpful for her we want to make sure that they're enough for everybody um, and I also, you guys, I'm sure are so sick of hearing me talk about Cupid Falls <laughs> from Etsy, um, where I get my rooting needles from. I'm always, always plugging them, but I'm also talking to her about getting a little custom set made. She has a lot of different sizes and stuff. So I want to do a little set, maybe of 10 needles of the sizes that I use, the sizes that I recommend for, um, for people who are coming into rooting brand new and they might not know what size needles to get. That is another one that I get a lot of and you know I always recommend like a 40, 42, 43, 46. So it'd be nice to have those options in one little set for people that want to buy those. Um, but that is not finalized yet. That's just something that we're working on right now. But it's like, it's really exciting to me <laughs> to have that, those little things to, you know, like things that are specific that I tell you guys all the time. Oh, I love these to be able to like have a little bit of input and have something special made is super super exciting to me and I hope that you guys really love them I'm honestly I'm the most excited about the sponges I know Desiree is gonna do a really amazing job and I just want to make sure that they're super useful I'm trying to come up you know comparing them to her um, her like normal patterns I definitely want them to be a little bit different. I know a lot of you bought her recent set, so I want to make sure that you're not getting a set that is, you know, almost identical. I want to make sure that they're unique and give a really great pattern. All right, you guys, it looks like I'm done with this layer. I guess, I guess I'm going out. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see me later and I won't die of hypothermia out there. I'm just kidding. I'm going to super, super bundle up. I have snow boots and very, very warm clothes, so I will be fine. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe and please like it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.